have will, you've got to start. But if you don't have ethics and morals, then you're not going to have very much. It's kind of like having a ship with no compass, no sails. You're not going to have uh, the direction that you need and you're not going to have the strength that you need to get to where you want to go. And then, of course, you need to have ability and you need to develop these abilities based upon your will, your ethics, your morals. Once you are embracing your real self and you are operating upon a knowledge of the fact that you have free will, that you have the ability to develop and uh, bring forth your own ethics and morals and to grow your ability, then you get into a position where when it comes to obligations, it is you who are determining these. And when these people, other people come to you and say, who are you? You get to define by the uh, existence of your obligations exactly who you are. And who you are is now nothing that limits you. What you are. That's why people who want to control you, they want authority over you. They never come and ask you what you are. What you are means you are fully empowered above them. Who you are means the exact opposite. society is essentially uh, created to help bring this about. In Canada, many people will have, who here has a, their motor vehicle license? Who has their motor vehicle license and did not read or read the Motor Vehicle Act before applying for their license? No one does that. Chances are that you never read the Criminal Code of Canada until you're at a point where they're trying to charge you with something under it, then it becomes interesting to you and you start looking. If you look in the criminal code, you will find in section uh, 38 and 39, it refers to a using a claim of right. And then if you look at section 126 and 127, it makes reference to... Oh, come on in, you can grab a seat, there's plenty of room. It makes, it makes reference to uh, the fact that if you have lawful excuse, you can in fact disobey the government and the courts. These governments and courts, they're operated by people. These people are equal with us, and essentially you establish lawful excuse to disobey them merely by serving a notice on them, telling them that you do not consent to them governing you anymore. Now the problem that you'll face is that a lot of us have been uh, conditioned and trained in high school to get to a certain place in moral development and stop there. Who here is familiar with Kohlberg's uh, moral development theories? No? This guy is a pretty smart guy. He developed this theory on moral development. And I think what you'll find, a lot of people, when you get to the point where you start trying to exercise your freedom under this manner, you will find that you're dealing with cops and the cops are going to be trying to impose their will upon you. And you'll be in a bit of a battle with them in order to determine uh, who's in charge of who. Now, Kohlberg he essentially stated that moral development, it, we all go through certain stages, although some of us, many of us actually, get locked into a certain level. And the first one, if I can find it here, the first stage of moral development essentially is uh, av avoiding punishment. It, like every child, you, they'll do what they're told because they want to avoid getting hurt. The second stage in it is going to be where they ask, what's in it for me? read this. Then the third stage starts where they refer to um, your, it's essentially it refers to peer pressure. You'll see a lot of this in high school where people decide what is right and what is wrong to do based on the consequences of not doing it within their social group. The fifth one then becomes uh, authority and law and order, and that's where many people just get stuck, and you're going to be dealing with cops, with guns, who believe that the highest level of moral development is in fact the law and order category. And they are operating from this perspective where they honestly believe that they have the moral high ground. Kohlberg uh, theorizes that there are in fact other levels of this mor moral development, and the second level, or, or the the third stage, and there's three stages with two in each one. The third stage is where you start looking at uh, the 
you're, you're going to do what you do. You decide on a moral course of action because it's beneficial to your society. Chances are most of you who are here, if you're living in this environment with a communal communal type artistic environment, you're, you're likely at that stage where you decide what you are going to do based on what is best for your entire group. The sixth stage is where you are going to be operating based on universal principles and it doesn't matter who comes at you with what, you are going to be operating with those universal principles and it doesn't matter what the law and order crowd does and comes and says. Essentially what I, I equated it to, I wonder if I even brought the right book. <laughs> I equated it to you're, you're going into grade school and you see a hall monitor and this hall monitor a little kid thinks oh you're in the hall and uh, you're not in class and he doesn't even recognize you as an adult and he says okay I'm gonna take you to the to the principal's office and you can say fine yeah I want to go talk to him and suddenly he realizes that he's not dealing with a kid he's dealing with an adult when you deal with these cops they are going to look they are they automatically look at us when we start saying no I'm not going to be accepting uh, your will on me in order to get me to engage in a certain action they're going to believe that you are avoiding that you are uh, seeking to uh, avoid your duties and that you are abandoning law and order Just grab my board, which is over there. so the fight then becomes getting them to realize that you're not abandoning law and order at all but that you are in fact growing and uh, in a moral manner. Okay, screw it if I don't see it this time. You tell they did bring it on, <laughs> Oh, here it is. No. Yeah, the first one is a, a pre-conventional one where you're concerned mostly with obedience and avoiding punishment. Second one is self-interest. Uh, the third one is conformity or peer pressure. Then there's authority and order. And then your social contract and then universal ethics. The free man society, what we recognize is that we're all striving to become uh, better human beings and to fulfill our, what we sense is right and wrong within us. The government comes at us and they tell us, no, you've got to follow these rules, these are your rules, this is what you have to do, and we then find ourselves in conflict with what we know is right in our heart and what we see them trying to get us to do. This becomes quite a challenge because you're going to have to educate these people who believe that law and order is the highest level of morality to the idea that there is in fact a higher level of morality and that that higher level of morality is based upon you embracing universe, universal ethical principles of peace and compassion. If when you tell them, listen, I'm better than your law and order, and you don't demonstrate these higher universal ethical principles, they're just going to look at you as a child trying to avoid their proper governance. So the trick is, when you deal with these people, is to recognize that A, they're just people, but they, do, they are operating on a, a fairly high moral ground. And if you want power over them, you have to achieve a higher moral ground. Now, uh, a lot of people here... Uh, Mike, and thanks, Mike, for inviting me. I wanted to thank Mike. Thanks for coming out, Rob. No worries. Yeah. Yeah. Um, he wanted me to speak a little bit about the difference of legal and lawful. Now, the difference between the two, legal is that which is affecting your person. If you, um, if you have a social insurance number, you're, you're in contract with the government, you have government-issued identification. What they are looking at you as, believe it or not, you might legally, you might uh, morally and be an adult, but legally they do not look at you as an adult. You have the exact same status now as you had when you were a little infant. And because you didn't change that status, they still look at you as a child of the province and a ward of the state. So until you break that presumption and you tell them, listen, I'm not your ward, I'm not your child, and these rules that you're trying to impose on me are only for the children and I am no longer a child, and then you demonstrate that you're not, then they, they will feel comfortable letting you go. Otherwise, they will feel that they have a duty over you. Now, a lot of people will think that they can, uh, you might have heard something along the lines of redeeming your straw man or seizing your straw man or something along that lines, or acting as agent for your person. Uh, I don't believe you can do any of this. And, and, uh, am I speaking over anyone's head here? Like, uh, does anyone not know what, what I'm talking about? Your name? Or any of your name? Yeah, even that. If you're if you are an artist and you're engaging in something and you're actually using it in a trade, yes. 
but if you have never made money off your name, if you've never, you know, I mean, the only time I've seen anyone successful with that was when it was a musical artist who wanted to stop someone else from using the same name.